Well, we have quite the power steering leak. So let's swap out the rack and we're gonna swap it out for the quick ratio V8 style rack. So down here we can see the driver's side boot is leaking the fluid. It is dripping, it's all wet, and it is just dumping out of here. It's got a lot worse overnight basically. So we are gonna replace the rack to solve this. So since we're gonna upgrade the steering rack for a quicker ratio, let's see the difference here. So this is gonna be the before, and yes, C4 Corvette seats. Watch that video if you want. Uh, I really like these. Still gotta clean them up though. Key in the on position so the steering wheel is unlocked. Let me turn it all the way to the right. And we're gonna count how many turns from lock to lock. One, two, and almost three. So we're at like two and three quarters, I'd say. So let's see what this V8 style rack does. So we're gonna remove the wheels. Taking a screwdriver, pop off the beauty ring here. Okay. Let's see, are these 19s? Yep, 19s. All right, so we need to remove this outer tie rod. So we're gonna work on this cotter pin. Okay, there we go, cotter pin out. All right, now we wanna loosen this, and I think it's a 16. 16 or 17, I got a 17 on here. It should do the job though. Yep. Okay, so then we'll We'll take the castle nut, we'll flip it upside down, if this is one of those that works like that, and looks like it does. Okay, we'll flip it like that. Now let's break the outer tie rod off of the inner tie rod while we have this loosened. Well, managed to break it loose with just this Harbor Freight adjustable wrench. Put it down on the bottom like this, pulled up with all my strength, and it's loose, so we're good. So I'm gonna keep this just snug against this. It doesn't really matter, but we're just gonna keep it right about there. That way we know when we assemble it, it needs to be right about there on the new rack. Now let's uh, get this tie rod out all the way. And we can just bend it back just how it was. Now we'll take a hammer and hit this out. Okay, now we're gonna hit this out. This is option one, dead blow, not as <laughs> damaging. But usually they don't like to come off. So we got a bigger hammer. There we go. So once I take this castle nut off, this will pop right out. We didn't damage that boot or anything, so that is pretty good. Now let's go do the same to the other side. Before I forget, we want to count how many turns it takes to take this outer tie rod out. So Righty's tidy, lefty's loosey. So let's go one, two, three, and all the way out. Okay, and it came out about like the 19 and a half turn, right before 20. Okay, we're taking a three quarters flare nut wrench. It's supposed to be metric, so this is slightly too big, but it'll work. Whoa, 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 and that was loose. I mean, I know this one was replaced recently, but that was loose, like definitely loose. I wonder if it started getting loose recently um, and that sped up the leak, but I mean, we're dripping out of the boot, so <laughs> that's not the only problem we had. So I got a catch pan, drain pan down here to catch some fluid once we get this out. And we got a mess on our hands. So let's just drain this all. Surprising how much fluid's actually left, some, considering this has been dripping for like a week now, and it's made quite the mess. All right, so to remove the passenger side bolt, I have a 18 millimeter socket on my impact. This goes to the nut on the bottom, and then a 15 wrench on the top, and let's take this bolt off. Okay, there's the nut, 
Let's take the bolt out. Well, I got the driver's side out, and I could have swore this is supposed to put up a fight. Now, this is a 2000 Camaro, so I wonder if they made a design change on the 2000s. But this bolt came out from the top, no problem. However, the passenger bolt, if you could see the head sticking up there, the passenger side bolt is hitting my AC compressor when I lift it up. Okay, managed to get the passenger side bolt out, and so instead of cutting it, I spent a couple of extra minutes taking out the bracket for the AC compressor and not necessarily taking it out, just loosening it up. So all the bolts are out for the bracket. I'll post a diagram in the description. Once I found that, that really helped me figure out where to look. But all the bolts are loose, compressor moves, brackets loose, and I was able to pull the bolt out directly there from the top. So I don't know why I never saw any mention about the passenger side not fitting with the AC compressor. I don't know. Uh, maybe because most people don't have an AC compressor anymore. AC delete or whatever. But, or maybe it's just a V6 thing. Maybe the V8 is where it's the driver's side, it hits the oil pan. Because, as you saw, I was able to get both out without cutting. It just required some removing of this AC bracket to get it out. But we got it out. Now, this will slide right on out of here. And forgive the rain, it is coming down. Okay, now let's disconnect the steering shaft from the steering rack. So there's a bolt head you can see up here, it's an 11 millimeter. That goes to the U-joint looking thing for the steering shaft. So all we have to do is undo that bolt and then we can slide the steering shaft on out. Now before we remove it all the way, get something to jam the steering wheel straight so it won't spin on you. Because once you remove that, the steering wheel is free to move. And it can spin so much that it damages the clock spring. And then you're in some trouble. So, so just stabbing a jack handle in here. And that way the steering wheel can't rotate at all. So that should do. Alright, it should come on out now. So we have the final bolt removed. There we go. And it should just slide forward. Watch the power steering lines. And it just lifts straight forward. Or they can flew it again, but there it is. Now we have quite the mess. We might as well clean up since we're here. Comparing the new versus the old, we have the remanufactured rack on the left here and the old one on the right. Now I ordered the ride and handling suspension package one. This is what would come on the Y87. So just looking at Rock Auto here, this would be the FE2, FE4, FE7 package if you see that in your RPO codes. Mine, however, had F41. So originally it would have been firm ride suspension F41 package. So we wanted the quicker ratio one, so we went with that. However, looking at it, they're pretty identical. And when we spun the steering wheel in the beginning, it had the quick ratio. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but part numbers are the same between the different racks. So, either way, it's going to work. However, the early F bodies, you got to be careful about uh, the angle of this, especially if you had a V8. If you got the V6 rack, it, would, it wouldn't fit. Um, but then going from in a V6 car, it, it could. You just have to swap the steering shaft. So whatever we have to do, we'll do it. But so far, it's looking like this is going to be a direct fit. Let's go ahead and put the bushing in, mount this up. Use my C-clamp here to just clamp the bushing in. It's three pieces, you know, two black parts and then the metal rubber part. So that just pushes in. It's really simple, and that's why I was able to use something this light. All right, now let's put this into the car. And last up before we're ready, I took this shield off of this. Ew, it just lifts off. We're going to put it on, but before that, I just made sure that the indent on um, whatever this shaft is, it matches the direction that this one does. That way, when we line it up, we're not going to have to fight or guess where it is. So, it was very close. It was a little to the right, so I turn it to the left just a tiny bit. Now they match. Now we can go ahead and put this down 
uh, and that just acts as a little seal. Not really doing much, but yep. All right, let's throw it in. All right, I got the new steering rack installed and everything lined up. So the steering shaft fit in perfectly. All is good. So we got everything good to go. I'm leaving the tag on till I verify that this works. I've ordered a set of outer tie rod ends. They haven't arrived yet and I just want to get this car back together and drivable by the end of the day. So I'm going to reinstall these even though we'll be replacing them soon. But now that's quick and easy. So I put the nut on, put a little bit of anti-seize um, and we're going to just thread it in the same amount that we took them off. Got the AC compressor bracket back bolted in and so now we're going to work on the power steering lines themselves. So I cleaned up the both of these two lines. Um, however, you see the o-ring here. We need to pick that off because we don't want to reuse that and it, it doesn't look good anyways um, So here we go. Here's the old one now the power steering rack came with two o-rings So here's one of the new ones and Just by feel they feel exactly the same, but I'll use two hands to compare just to be sure um, But so if that's the case we'll lube it up and put it right on and put a little power steering fluid into a cap, dip the O-ring on, and there it is. So now we can take the cap off and thread it in. But I'm, I'm going to put the O-ring on this one, and then let's put both of them in at the same time. Alright, just filled it up. Didn't even use a full quart, so... Alright, now I'm going to leave the cap loosely, just so it can bleed air. Because now we got to bleed the system, and we don't want to start it with the pump empty or the rack empty. So this is how you bleed it. With the steering wheel unlocked, I'm just going to turn from lock to lock. And I'm also listening for leaks, just to make sure we didn't um, forget to tighten anything. But there's only two lines, so... So I'm going to do this about 15 times with the car off. And once I'm done, I'll show you the next step. So we've gone lock to lock 15 times with the car off just to do an initial fluid push through the whole system. Now, this is kind of optional. I don't think this is actually necessary, but it's a good idea. So we're gonna start it up and then we're gonna turn it off real quick because we don't wanna run that pump dry. We just wanna make sure fluid goes through the pump, pumps through real quick, shut it off. Yep, I'm going to do that like three times. Okay. And now I'm just going to go lock to lock. And again, the car's in the air, so it's going to be light. But right now, we're just working the fluid through all of the openings that it goes through. Alright, let's take a look underneath, see what we're working with. And now we have the engine running, car back on the ground, so the, there's weight on the suspension and on the steering. So now we're gonna turn it, and now it should be the true test. We just keep doing this. It should feel good already. If not, just keep doing it till it feels like power steering, as if all the air is bled out. Uh, basically, we're just listening for any noises from the power steering pump, because if you hear loud noises, that means it's low on fluid, so you need a stop, refill. But we'll just keep doing this. Turn the steering wheel. And just do that a couple times. And keep looking in the engine bay for leaks. As I said, there's only two spots it can leak. So definitely check there. And if you overfill this, it will dump out. Uh, if you don't have the cap on all the way. So that happened to me. Don't do that. And just to count from lock to lock, let's go all the way to the right. Okay, ready? One, two, just over two. So before it was like two and a half, but now it's like 
two and a quarter. One, two, and I mean two and an eighth really. It's not much at all. So we definitely have a quicker ratio steering box now. Everything seems to be bled. I'll keep an eye on it in the next couple days just to double triple check. And like I said, I need to replace the tie rod outer ends and I'll do that off camera because it's simple enough, but you saw me put the new ones in. So we got the quicker ratio installed. I think it was only worked out because this is a 2000s. I think the 97 to 99, you'd have to swap the steering shaft and then definitely the pre-facelift you'd have to. So I think that I just kind of lucked out with this being a 2000. I think the 2000, 2002 kind of just, they all just shared the V8 parts, even though it's a V6 car for the most part. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.